Omnia posted a sharp rise in full year earnings helped by a good performance in its mining and agriculture business. Diluted headline earnings per share increased tenfold to 765 cents for the year to the end of March. Revenue rose 6% to 9.4 billion rand on the back of volume increases in its mining and agriculture businesses and the overall rise in commodity prices. I'm joined now by Rod Humphreys, he's CEO of Omnia. Thanks so much, Rod, for joining us today. Well, we've seen the surge in full year profit and helped by, as I said, demand for mining and agricultural products. Run us through the year that was because it seems to have been a year that's treated you pretty well. Yes, no, I think so. I mean, we, we came off a fairly low base after having taken a knock in the prior year on, on stock inventories. Mm -hmm. But even taking that into account, I think we've had a, a good year. Uh, what we've seen is really the impact of, of resource limitations out in the markets and uh, we continue to see major increases in all metals and, and the minerals. Uh, and certainly also in agricultural and food products, which uh, in dollar terms have been escalating quite alarmingly over the, over the last while. Mm -hmm. And that is particularly good for our business. Of course, when it comes to those stock inventories you were talking about, you'd written down 350 million rand last year, right? And that's why this uh, surge in profit that we're seeing right now. That's quite correct. Okay. And uh, we're seeing really a, a restoration of normal profitability after that one sort of abnormal type of mm -hmm. adjustment. But even taking that into account, as I said, I, I, I think it's a, it's a good performance. Well, certainly it's the profitability in the, uh, you know, in the agricultural uh, business and the mining business that's being highlighted. Uh, how is this translated into the chemicals division? Because uh, you've got South Africa's manufacturing sector that seems to have impacted on that division specifically in a negative way. Yes, no, I think that would be correct. If one looks at the manufacturing index as a whole, uh, and one compares the level of activity there, one will see that we're probably at today's levels at where we were five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. So that sector, after the, the financial crisis that the world went through, is still not recovered. And uh, I think it's being impacted by the strength of the RAND where manufacturers find it quite difficult to, to compete in the, with the strength that we see at the moment. What's your reading of the macro environment? Because uh, within that context, you're also looking at the impact the RAND is having on that division where it's RAND strength that really t took a toll on that chemicals division as well. No, I mean, as I say, I think that's, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes time for manufacturers to adjust to that. And certainly they are not being as competitive um, in, you know, in view of imports coming in and being less, much less competitive on exports going out. So that affects our business. I think we've done quite well to hold our volumes in those circumstances, mm -hmm. but our margins have been squeezed by a typical margin squeeze. Yeah. That having been said, I mean, where you had big cash flow last year, it seems to have been sucked up now by uh, capital uh, or in working capital and receivables. Uh, you know, is that an element of restocking that is happening in that regard? Yes, I think so. I think uh, we, we really need to look at a three-year picture, particularly in the agricultural section, to better understand that. Mm -hmm. in the, you know, two years ago, we were highly stocked after uh, the world financial crisis, and we then reduced stocks, which we then saw all the cash tumbling into the business uh, last year. And this year, with prices moving in an upward direction in, in dollar terms and a degree of, of upstocking, uh, we've definitely seen uh, some cash going out to, to stocking up again. So it has been a more normalized picture, I think, for this year than the prior mm -hmm. two years, but nevertheless, some cash outflow. Of course, you've got cash or capex rather uh, going towards funding a new nitric acid plant and uh, part of your capex being dedicated that way. How is that progressing and when, it's, uh, when is it set to be up and running and contributing to the company's bottom line? No, I think that's going extremely well. We're we're on track to, to do it in the time we said, uh, which will be end of first quarter um, next year. And uh, it's on budget. So we're looking forward to, to the startup of the plant, which uh, will certainly be able to enhance our margins by replacing a much more expensive source. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, run us through other CapEx plans. Do you have other CapEx plans underway uh, for the remainder or for the year ahead? Uh, because we do know that there's a focus more so on organic growth than anything else. No, I mean, we always have some degree of, of organic expenditure, and that's probably in the order of 250 million rand a year. But I think the moment that the major focus for us is in this uh, nitric acid plant complex, it's more than one plant. 
Um, we indicated a, a number of 1.4 billion, and we're well on our way to spending that. So really, that dwarfs the amount of the capital expenditure that we are spending in other areas. Well, what about acquisitive growth? Is it completely off the table? No, not at all. I think we've always had the stated intention that where an acquisition makes sense, uh, we will certainly do that. We have done in the past, and we're always on the lookout for good value. Of course, a while ago, we had management uh, recognizing that uh, in the long term, you needed to focus on diversifying the risk profile of the business, uh, looking at new growth opportunity. Uh, are you still looking that way and diversifying the business further, where it is very dependent on, or it's a very cyclical nature that it boasts at this stage? Well, no, I think we've already achieved a lot of that. You know, we have three good businesses. Uh, that both, all three of them are really in the chemical sector and the chemical services industry. And here is a typical year where we've seen chemicals, for example, had a difficult market, market circumstance. But on the other hand, both our mining and our agriculture business come to the form with good performance. So you can see here the balance that we've got in the benefit of diversification mm -hmm. in having three businesses with three very different customer bases. Let's talk about the benefits of carbon credits because you do get carbon credits. How is that uh, influencing your revenue stream at this stage and what's your outlook in that regard? Well, this last year um, there was a problem with the uh, certification of the, of the credits that we had generated. It's purely one of a temporary nature. And, uh, those, and as a result, in our last year's performance, we had no carbon credit sale, which in the prior year we had 50 million rands worth. Mm -hmm. So we would expect then in the coming year to have basically um, double the quantity available for sale. So you know, that certification process is now proceeding. And um, it, it does mean there's, a, let's say, a good fill-up for this year. Practically speaking, how do you get to that level? in terms of you know, the changes that you've got to adapt in your, you know, or make in your business to get those uh, carbon credits? No, well, I think what we did was we installed some capital some time ago, uh, which enabled us to destroy greenhouse gases. And in so doing, one was able to make application for carbon credits, which mm -hmm. we duly did. And we were one of the first companies, in fact, to make such application. So that is all a certified process that has to be approved by a UN body. And uh, we've gone through all of that red tape. Uh, we have, uh, as I said in the past, earned it. Um, there was a delay this year in, in, this year in, the, in the certification. So, you know, but it'll be back. And I think really the only issue there is what happens post-2012. Yeah. Uh, we all know the Kyoto Protocol comes to an end at the end of 2012. I don't believe that's the end of carbon credits. Uh, the world will continue to, to find a solution post-2012. And we are already seeing buyers for carbon credits post-2012. Well, as I uh, was talking about earlier, we saw the share price on Omnia falling back today, and it's largely because shareholders are disappointed uh, with the lack of a dividend payout. Uh, what's the status on your Divi policy? Well, I think that's maybe a little bit unfair comment. <laughs> you know, we went to the market last year and uh, got a one billion rands worth of equity into the company. And obviously, when you go along and you, and you put a whole lot of additional equity in on the one hand, to pay out a dividend immediately out of the money that you just raise really makes no sense. So what we have said, though, and today, is that we believe that the cash flows are better than what we anticipated. And although we are spending a great deal of money still on the nitric mm -hmm. acid plant, I think that we're in a position to say that we believe that dividends will resume earlier than initially anticipated. And the board will certainly take a positive view on that in the, in the forthcoming year.